Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Okay, so I got a kind of interesting uh, video for you today. Um, Foxy Mama sent me a lot of information, a lot of hard work. She did. <laughs> She did a lot of hard work on this here, so I want to give her a shout out, Foxy Mama. Um, okay, so first of all, I'm going to start out by talking about suicides, okay? And it'll all make sense, you know, when you see... It'll all make sense, I should say, how it's going to relate to Chris, you know, when, you, when it all comes together. Hopefully it'll make sense to you. Um, hopefully I won't bore you and you guys will kind of follow and get the point of what I'm trying to say. I'm a little nervous for some reason trying to, I'm nervous about screwing this one up and not approaching it right and not, you know, getting the right information for you guys to understand what I'm trying to say. So hopefully, hopefully I did an all right job on some research and you guys could kind of connect the dots here. I don't know if you, any of you guys are like psychology majors, but I don't know if you guys, um, or if you, are you familiar with Carl Jung? Well, he's kind of the founder in, in some of this stuff that I'm going to talk about when it comes to like genetic memory and collective unconscious. But we're going to back up here and I want to go and give you some statistics on suicides, okay? So this information actually comes from the National Center for Biotechnology Information, okay? So this is a reliable resource here. So Okay, so most suicides are related to psychiatric disease okay so psychological autopsies from the middle of the previous century so from 1950 and onwards have revealed that most people who have died by suicide have suffered from mental disorders a recent figure suggests this number could be at least 90 percent on the other hand though most people with mental disorders do not die by their own hand so i'm not saying that you know most people have mental disorders commit suicide. No, but what the, these findings mean is from the studies that they've done and the autopsies they performed, that 90% of the people that committed the suicides that they were studying had some kind of mental disorder, okay? So, like I said, I'm not saying that a lot of people with mental disorders are going to go out and commit suicide. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm also not saying that everyone that commits suicide has a mental disorder. Okay, but I'm saying there is a strong correlation between the two. Okay, so a, a strong correlation between mental disorders and suicides. Okay, so one doesn't cause the other. It's just a correlation. There's no cause here. Okay, but you know, correlations do usually kind of tell a story and and kind of mean something in a way, you know, like, why is there that correlation? Why, why is, you know, the autopsies they performed that 90% of those suicides were by people that had mental disorders because there is some correlation here, okay? When you see, for instance, you know, they seen the, the autopsies that they performed that 90%, 90% of all the studies they did, all the autopsies they performed from 1950 and onward, 90% of those were committed by people that suffer from a mental disorder. But there is also other factors that are associated with suicides, like relationship problems, other life stressors like criminal or legal matters, financial troubles. I mean, so there's other things that, reasons why people, you know, feel the need to take their life sometimes, which is really sad, it really is. So, okay, so the reason I'm bringing this up is because Someone sent me some interesting information, like I said earlier, on Chris Watts' ancestors, okay? Not even that far back. I mean, this is from the middle of the, you know, 20th century. So, his second cousins and his great uncles are the ones that are I'm going to be um, bringing up in, the, in this video. So... It's not like it's like ancestors way down, like so far away. It was ones that were born in the night or the, yeah, the 1900s, I should say the mid 1900s, most of them. 
And like I said, they were either his second cousins or his great uncles. But I'm going to uh, get you a screenshot so you guys could see that too. Like I said, somebody sent me some very interesting information. Well, Foxy Mama. Like I said, Foxy Mama sent me this. And it's about Chris Watts' ancestors on his dad's side, okay? So I, I want to first start this off by reading you a message sent to this person by one of Chris's relatives, okay? So this was a biological relative of one of the Watts men who was murdered by his wife in self-defense, okay? So this guy, this is a, a relative of one of the Watts men, right? I think this was his, wait, which one? No, this was the one that would be Chris's second cousin, okay? That was murder because he was attacking his wife so it was self-defense she shot him um i guess he suffered you know he was an alcoholic he was an, a violent man angry man but let me read you this what what this person wrote said my father's family was plagued with schizoid and paranoid tendencies depression and other mental illnesses there were several suicides. Leonard Watts, Chris's second cousin, was said to have a terrible problem with alcohol. He became very angry with his wife on a particular night. She shot him when he attacked her. He was a very angry man. He was also a very intelligent man with incredible visual memory skills. Okay, so does that sound familiar? Think about Chris. Chris, what, he had the IQ of 140, supposed, you know, he's a genius. And uh, remember how they called him a rain man? His coworkers called him rain man because he had that memory. They said he, could, he would just see a site one time and he knew it by heart. He only needed to see it once and he knew exactly where everything was. And I feel like even didn't his, um, did his mom or somebody else even talk about how he had like a photographic memory. Okay. So, and also, you know, his violent tendencies. Think about what Chris did. I mean... Rage, angry, um, maybe, we don't know about addiction. This, you know, Leonard was an alcoholic. There's some speculation if Chris was into drugs, that's, we don't know that for sure. Was he into drugs? I don't know. Can you look at Thrive as being a drug that he was addicted to? It's all up to how you, how you view that. So, but the, you can't deny the violence that's similar. You know, violence against women. I mean, you look... Well, gosh, they were all females. I mean, if you, well, besides Aniko, but if you think about it, you know, his two daughters and his wife. So that Leonard, they say, was a very intelligent man with incredible visual memory skills. You know, not a lot of people have those, like, photographic memory with that, that kind of, those kind of skills. So there, ha I feel like there has to be something here where it was passed down. So if you look at this overview of all his ancestors here. Well, not even all of them, but this is just in a, a time span of 15 years, okay? It's his great uncles and second cousins, right? There are, there are four suicides, one homicide, and either a suicide, homicide, or accident. The other one's not for sure what it is. But all these are deaths due to gunshot, okay? The four suicides and one homicide were all done within the same 15 years of each other. So that wasn't that like long of a time span to have basically six deaths by gunshots, four suicides, possibly five suicides, and then homicide. And the homicide was the Leonard because he was attacking his wife. So she was, it was self-defense, okay? And, you know, it was known that he was violent. He was a violent man. And, you know, he had these rage problems and he was an alcoholic. And so I think it's safe to say that mental disorders were in his genes. I mean, that's just on the Watt side. Now, what about the other side? I mean, we all, everybody's been talking about how they think Cindy is a narcissist. You know, there's no, nobody can know for sure, at least... I'm sure if she has a psychiatrist, they could tell us. Or, like, people that maybe know her better. But then they would have to, you know, have a degree to be able to diagnose her. So, I'm not sure. I mean, she it seems like she has a lot of the symptoms. And people are throwing that out there. But, I mean, I don't... I don't think we know enough about her to, know, to like, for sure label her as a narcissist. But she has some of the traits. And she just seems... Not like a very, you know, loving, affectionate person, which 
There's nothing wrong with that, but she almost seems like a cold, angry, maybe vengeful person. I guess that's a that's a story for another day, you know, because I don't know. This is mo mostly what I'm going to talk about is on the Watt side, which is kind of weird because we, like I said, we've all been talking about how he inherited it from his mom, you know, but here he could have inherited it from both sides because now we see that the Watts definitely have a history of mental disorders in their family, a, hist a history of violence, a history of just the characteristics that we see in Chris or that we not only see in Chris, but just that uh, the actions that he did that night or that morning, those, I mean, for somebody to be able to do that, he has to have some of these traits. And you go, you go on his mom's side, um, Cindy said, I don't know, but a lot of people seem to think she is a narcissist too, you know? And I, I think there's, you know, we see a lot of traits that she could be, but I can't say for sure because I don't know enough about her but she might be too so he might have had he might not have been able to stand a chance he's got it on his dad's side and his mom's side possibly but I also want to talk about something else that could have played a part in this traumatic past which this traumatic past I feel like seems to be inherited in more ways than one okay so not only through genes like genetics have you guys ever heard of genetic memory I know I brought it up at the beginning, but have, so how many of you guys have heard of that? Okay. It's a fascinating idea. It's, 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 it's so interesting and so intriguing. I remember learning about it in, you know, in college and I was just, I was, it was, I was so interested in it. One of the definitions of genetic memory is the idea that you could inherit memories from your ancestors without having to experience them firsthand. Okay. So some psychologists most famously Carl Jung, have theorized that we're born with memories and experiences of our ancestors imprinted on our DNA. So basically, you know, where do these inheritance and genes, where does it start from? Like how it has to start from somewhere. Like how does it get imprinted on to your DNA? If it's, if it always came from the time before, you know what I'm saying? Do you got, does that make sense? Like, it had to have came from somewhere, right? And and now all these new studies are saying that they're they're researching this that you could actually imprint on your DNA. Like for instance, you can encode DNA with experience. So let's say you have a, a child, right? Or let's say before you have a child, something happens and it gets encoded into your DNA and then you pass it on to your child. I hope I don't lose you guys here. Just follow. It's pretty interesting stuff. Hopefully you guys will find it interesting. Okay. So I just want to, I'm just going to tell you um, the three different kinds of memory. Okay. So there's episodic memory. Okay. That's one t type of memory. It's a memory of specific events, such as your memory of your last birthday party or your last vacation. You know, like some kind of memory that's personal to your experience, like something you experience and it's like personal to you. Like for example, it goes along with what we're, you know, trying to prove here or try to get you to think about. But like, let's say you have some kind of trauma that you experienced. That would be an uh, episodic memory, like that actual experience. Okay. So that's one t type of memory. Um, the second type is semantic memory. And this is memory of information that is presented as a fact. For example, the fact President Trump is the current president, right? That's a fact. Chris Watts is a monster. That's a fact. No, I don't know. That was kind of a joke. Ha ha. But no, I mean, that's not a good example of a fact. But two plus two is four. A fact. You know, factual stuff. Ted Bundy is a serial killer. He's a serial killer. You know, that's a fact. Okay, so that's semantic memory. So semantic memories are facts. You know, President Trump is president. Two plus two is four. That's semantic. Episodic memory is like kind of personal experiences, your personal memory, your uh, birthday party, vacation, trauma, specific trauma that you experienced. Okay, the third type of memory is procedural memory. Okay, so procedural memory is memory of how to do things. For example, your memory of how to swim how to change a light bulb, how to ride a bike. So those are procedural memories, okay? So procedural memory can be inherited 
For example, babies know how to suck without being taught. They know how to suck without being taught how to do it. I mean, how did they learn? They just know how. So it's like a procedural memory that's kind of inherited. Well, not kind of, it is inherited. So that's kind of, um, we all kind of can see, and it's, it's been studied that procedural memory is genetic, you know, so that is inherited, okay? But the question here that I want you all to think about is, is episodic memory and semantic memory genetic? Or can it be genetic, right? Can it be inherited, I should say, all right? So semantic memory might be a little easier for you guys to imagine being inherited, at least partially, because these are facts so it's not necessarily personal memories to you but just facts that are out there in the universe that are facts so it's a little bit easier to to think that it could be inherited even though it's still if you think about it is how does that get inherited if, if you aren't encoding it on your dna as you're living you know what i'm saying if that makes sense or at least, or your grandma, or whatever, when this fact is put out there in the universe, who is encoding it into your DNA to actually, to be, to, to make it inherited at all, okay? And especially the, the episodic memory, I mean, that's personal to each person, so that's, it's, it's pretty crazy, but it, it makes sense here. So it's pretty crazy to think about, but, I mean... I, I think there's something to it here. I really do. Okay. So Carl Jung, for those of you who aren't familiar with him, he's a Swiss psychotherapist and a psychiatrist and the founder of analytical psychology and is well known for his theory of the collective unconscious. Okay. The collective unconscious, unlike the personal unconscious, is a type of genetic memory that can be shared by individuals with a common ancestor or history. According to Jung, the collective unconscious consist of implicit beliefs and thoughts had by our ancestors. While we are not aware of the collective unconscious, it can influence how we act. For example, if our ancestors had a belief that fire was dangerous, this belief can be a part of our collective unconscious and influence how we behave when we are near fire. Okay, so Jung came up with this theory why psychoanalyzing his patients' dreams. He believed that the symbolism he found that was prominent in their dreams showed similarities to specific ancestral history that was difficult to explain by anything in the dreamer's own life. So those of you who have taken psychology classes, you learn like your dreams, you can't dream about something that you haven't experienced, not necessarily that you experienced like what's going on in the dream, but parts of the dream, there's some kind of memory for each part of the dream that you're having. I don't know. Wait, I'm not explaining that good because it's not like, you know, if you have a dream, you're flying it, you're ever flying. But what I'm saying is that, let's say, let's say you're flying on a rug. Well, that rug that you're on, you would have had to have seen it somewhere in your life. You know what I'm saying? Or like whatever you're, when you're flying over something and you see the buildings, it those buildings are coming from some kind of memory, some kind of personal memory that you have. I don't know if that makes more sense of what I'm trying to say. So what he's saying that when he was psychoanalyzing people's dreams, he found symbolism that was prominent in their dreams that showed similarities to specific ancestral history that was difficult to explain by anything in the dreamer's own life. So the things that were in their dreams, they, they couldn't be explained by anything that the person would have any knowledge of unless if there was some kind of collective unconscious that that's going on here. So some kind of knowledge or what should I say? Some kind of knowledge. Yeah. That's been passed down by an ancestor of these people that, you know, that he was psychoanalyzing. Just there's, there was things in the dreams that just, this is how he came up with, you know, this theory because there was things in the dream they were dreaming about that they would have no other way of knowing or having that in their dream because they never experienced any of that. Like there, there would be no way to have that in their memory to be able to dream about it, if that makes sense. So that's where he started thinking, whoa, wait, maybe there's some kind of, you know, unconscious that's 
from your ancestors that's actually passed down. So that's what made him start thinking about this, okay? Another example of this, think about musical virtuosos, right? Or even like an artistic virtuoso. <laughs> See, that sounds weird right now, virtuoso. Now, remember I was talking about the words that just sound weird when you say them? Sometimes, but other times it doesn't. But anyway, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. A, a musical virtuoso. So just like a... Uh, for those of you guys who don't know what a virtuoso is, it's a person highly skilled in music or another artistic pursuit. Or some kind of art. Because music is kind of... Um, classified as an art you know so you know it could be like actual art like a painting or just somebody um just highly skilled that has this natural talent um sometimes they call them like musical geniuses you know where they're just born and they just have this talent so this this kind of plays into goes into play with genetic memory so if you think of a musical genius i'll just use that word so people that are just born with this natural talent and they, you don't even know where it comes from right Okay, so even though they have never had a music lesson in their life, most of their musical genius begins so early and spontaneously as an infant that it cannot possibly have been learned. Like, they just, they, they, it begins as early as infancy sometimes. There's no way that they learn this. And you'll even hear that these people say that they don't have, they never went and learned this anywhere. It was just something that was within. They didn't go out and like take classes on it or it was just something that was just inside, like in, in them when they were born and just something they knew how to do, right? It's, they say it's like it came factory installed, you know, even in the absence of formal training, okay? They have innate access to what can be called the rules or vast syntax of music. There are many examples of these people and also artistic virtuosos, like I was t saying earlier that for... People like sculptors, painters. Here's an example. A sculptor who can mold a perfect specimen of any animal with clay in an hour or less only after a single glance at the animal itself. Every muscle and tendon perfectly positioned. And he has had no formal training. And there are so many examples of this. So many. I mean, this is just, I'm just picking out a few, but there's so many. This happens all the time, okay? Okay to explain this innate access to the vast syntax and rules of art, music, mathematics, and language in the absence of any formal training. Genetic memory, to me, seems like it must exist. I mean, think about it. Just from hearing that, like, how, where is this memory coming from? Okay, so here's another definition of genetic memory. Genetic memory, simply put, is the complex abilities and actual sophisticated knowledge inherited along with other more typical and commonly accepted physical and behavioral characteristics. So like I said, Carl Jung, along with other psychologists, theorized that we are born with memories and experiences of our ancestors imprinted on our DNA. It's possible that our most basic survival instincts might stem from some long ago trauma experienced by a dead relative. So is it possible that our memories of our ancestors are embedded into our DNA, perhaps influencing us in ways we are barely aware of? For instance, Chris, with all this, all these suicides and who knows what other trauma, but you know, you had a couple of homicides
And then there was a few that were, she said, that fell in the range of that it could possibly be either a homicide, suicide, accident. It could be natural causes, but it was, but there's a few others that fall in the range, but she said she couldn't find the death certificate of them, of how they actually died. The other ones, or the few other ones that are at the, at the end of this, this chart that she made up. So you see that they're at the age range where it could possibly be a suicide or a homicide rather than natural causes because they're so young but that's not for sure but what is for sure is you got four suicides and two homicides well one homicide for sure and the other one could be a suicide homicide or accident but all gunshots all gunshot deaths so I mean could he possibly have some kind of genetic memory it's Im embedded into his DNA, you know, that was passed down, that uh, predisposed him for this uh, violent, his violent tendencies and this violent act that he committed, you know, mixed with, I mean, so not only the genetic memory of these traumas, but him inheriting these mental disorders that maybe a lot of them suffered from, for them to have committed suicide, like I said at the beginning of this, there's a strong correlation between suicides and mental disorders. So they, there's a good chance that they might be, they might have suffered from a mental disorder. So not only the did the genes directly would have passed down, you know, a mental disorder could be directly inherited um, through the DNA. But also through this genetic memory of, you know, these traumatic experiences or even, you know, trauma or, you know, the way they were feeling, um, whatever, whatever went into their experiences of why they were so, so depressed or so whatever drove them to want to kill themselves. They, I, I'm sure they've ex they experienced something in their life that, maybe some kind of trauma or whatever those experiences were those passed down to Chris, you know, it's just something to think about because it's kind of weird that could be a coincidence, all the suicides and then the murders, then who knows if there's could be even more. And you know, on his mom's side too. Okay. So sorry, a few more things. I just, I tried to pick out the most interesting things in some of these articles I remember, but I love psychology and I love this stuff, but I find this stuff so interesting. I remember when I learned about this and the first time I learned about it in one of my psychology classes, and I actually, it made me go to Borders that week and I bought, I bought a Carl Jung book because I was so fascinated by it that I wanted to learn more. So I bought this book um, about Carl Jung and his theory on collective unconscious. And I, I, I think I... Um, Gave it to a friend in Colorado, actually. So, but anyway, so I, I hope you guys are interested. I don't know. A lot of you guys might not be interested. It might be a little bit too much for you, but I thought I'd throw it out there. See what you guys thought. Thought, and hopefully a few guys, a few of you guys are still, you've made it this far and are still watching. But, and thank you for those of are you still here watching. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. What evidence have we seen of this happening? Okay, there's evidence in rodents that you can breed learning how to run a maze into the next generation. So if rodents find themselves in a certain maze and their parents had learned some things about the maze, then the little rodents don't have to start from scratch when they learn to navigate it. It's like there's this memory of how to navigate the maze that their parents passed down to them. Isn't it, is that not crazy? So this at least shows that it's possible that you can have some memory in your genetic material and this material is carried on. So that means that the memory had to have came from the parents because it wasn't like it was inherited in the genes um, before that. It had to come from the direct parents. That experience somehow had to encode the memories into their genes and be able to pass it to their to their kids or to the babies, you know. 
So it had to, it was from the direct experience. Like, is not is that not crazy? Am I just the only one that fi- finds this stuff fascinating? So you never know if you can pass down a certain kind of fear or trauma, right? Right? I mean, if your trauma is severe, it could impact your genetic material, right? I mean, if, if you're following this theory and you're, you know, you believe that it's possible, then, you know, Chris's ancestors, or if you want to just look, kind of use it for yourself, for your personal experiences, if you're trying to study yourself, or however you want to look at it, if you're, you want to look at it to study Chris, but that maybe a certain kind of fear that from your ancestors or trauma that they experienced themselves, okay, that somehow it, it encodes into their DNA and then is passed on. So I don't know. It makes you wonder, you know, maybe the more severe the event, the chances, more in chance of it encoding into your DNA, or maybe it has nothing to do with the severity. I don't know, but it does make you wonder. It's interesting because you see all the, all the, the violence, you know, the suicides and you wonder, can he, it could, it could have gotten passed down to Chris. Could it, you know, from this genetic memory, um, obviously from genes, you know, from uh, mental disorders, obviously they, I mean, I don't want to say obviously, but probably they suffer some, from some kind of mental disorders. And that is definitely could be genetic depending on what it is. So that could be passed down. And also I feel like that this genetic memory could come into play and, and somehow could have, um, encoded on on the on their dna and been passed down and somehow been passed down to chris and somehow kind of could have had an effect on you know chris's his personality i should say or his his gene his um his memories his genes his his how he is you know his I don't even know how you, how you want to word it, but I'll just leave it at like his personality. Okay. So I think it'd be very interesting to find out if you could encode DNA with experience. Okay. So before you have a child, something happens that is encoded in the DNA and your pat, and then you pass it on to your child. That's kind of the whole basics of how it works. You know, if that's, if this is what's going on, but now I know we're not talking about like, um, that's two different things. Okay. Cause so, cause just, Disorders are inherited. I mean, you can, they, there's a lot of um, g- uh, genetic components to a mental disorder. But I know we're talking about memory being passed down. Genetic memory, okay? So I know that's different than, you know, gen- uh, mental disorders. There I go. I'm pointing at this book because it's this freaking Chris Roth books right here. I keep put my hand on him like I'm talking to him or something I don't even want to look at him anymore I'm gonna turn it over (laughs) but anyway um I don't know so let's just get back on track here so like I said it would be interesting to see to find out if you could encode the DNA with experience with I I think it's 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 it definitely you could definitely can because where does the encoding start it has to start somewhere right What we need to find out is whether something that occurs during your lifetime can impact or imprint the DNA that's being passed on. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Is there something that's going on in each of our lives, in in our lifetime, that is making an imprint on our DNA of something that could be passed on to our kids, okay? There are certainly some changes to the DNA within our lifetimes, okay? So we see how the human body changed in different environments. Another article titled, Memories Can Be Inherited, and Scientists May Have Just Figured Out How, okay? Now, this is some information from this article. So it talks about epigenetics, which is the study of inherited changes in gene expression. Changes that are inherited, but that are not inherent to our DNA, For instance, life experiences, which are directly coded in human DNA, can actually be passed on to children. Studies have shown that survivors of traumatic events may have effects in subsequent generations. Okay, so how interesting. Like, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. So, I want to talk about, now I want to bring up Chris's grandmother. So, you remember Chris's grandmother? 
who is mentioned in the book. Cindy's mother, her name is Gertrude. She was born in Radisov, Czechoslovakia in 1926, okay? She grew up as Hitler rose to power. She lived an hour from the concentration camps. People were torn from their homes, never to be seen again. So she would have lived in terror. Like, think about living in that environment, in that time period. She would have been so scared, like, every day. She would have been living in terror, okay? I mean, can you imagine? So, do you think that could have encoded into her DNA? Do you think she could have somehow passed that down to Chris at all? Think about it, because... oh. Let me finish this. Let me finish uh, a little bit of information about her. So I guess she was classified as stateless. So then she married an American serviceman and moved to the U.S. Her husband had fought in, wo in World War II. So he could ha have, have some traumatic experiences that he passes down too in some genetic memory, if you think about it, because he's Chris's grandfather, okay? So if you think about this genetic memory and trauma that can be passed down in their experiences and behaviors and attitudes. And of course, whatever was genetically passed down. So think about that. Like all the genetic memory that they would be passing down. All the trauma that they would be passing. All the fear and terror that they went through that they could have passed down to Chris. It, through genetic memory, right? Any of the behaviors or attitudes that they had that could be passed down. Um, and then, of course, with, you know, the genetics that's passed down. Because the genetics is what's, is the, their genes, right? But the memory is, the memory of, because I, I just, I hope you guys aren't getting confused between genetic memory and, and just genetics and genes and stuff. But the, but genetic memory is like their experiences that could s potentially be passed down and the way that that could happen is potentially that it encodes onto their genes like in a in their lifetime okay when i'm talking about genetic memory encoding on your um dna it's you know like i said your episodic memory which is your experiences uh you know your personal experiences maybe the your fears and trauma you went through and um, you know, your beliefs and your behaviors, your attitudes. That's what I'm referring to as far as with Chris's, what I'm talking about with, um, what I'm trying to, um, correlate with Chris's characteristics, but also the genetic memory could come from semantic memory. And that remember I was telling you the semantic memory is, facts you know like just facts president trump is the president is the current president two plus two is four so that also could have they you could pass that on you know through genetic memory right and then the procedural memory which i gave you the example remember of um musical geniuses they just know like the rules of music and like painters or sculptors that could just do it without without any formal training so all of that could be passed down well in this theory there's you know that when you look into it they're trying to show that possibly that all this falls into genetic memory but the important part that i would say the important memory that i'm talking about for what i'm trying to correlate with you know chris's ancestors and how he turned out and his actions is the episodic memory which is you know different experiences that his ancestors went through or with the suicides and stuff and mental disorders and just different things that could have made them from their experiences and if they had some trauma growing up I don't know if they did but just different different experiences that could have been passed down from even their tendency to be violent just different things like that so I, I mean I'm that would mainly fall into the episodic memory. So that's what I'm trying to, you know, say maybe some of that was passed down from his ancestors, from his great uncles and his second cousins that, you know, were all died and you know, four suicides. Were they 
Did they have some kind of trauma growing up? Did they have some kind of upbringing? Did they have whatever it may be, but was that passed down to Chris? Inherently, somehow passed down through this genetic memory. Like I said, I'm talking about his grandmother now, which lived into a tear, probably. You know, look what she lived through. And then, you know, his grandfather was fought in World War II. So who knows, you know, the trauma that he experienced. So, you know, you have that post-traumatic stress. I mean, I bet you, back then, they didn't, that was unheard of. I mean, it wasn't unheard of because it didn't exist, but there was no label for it. There was no term for it. It was just, you know, whatever they were feeling, they were feeling, but there there wasn't a, a like a, a label to explain, well, what it is, you know. Now, they would definitely have probably experienced post-traumatic stress if they would have went... To a psychiatrist, they would have probably got diagnosed with, you know, some kind of post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. Unless if they were just able to deal with it on their own, you know. But I'm just saying, did that have something to do with it? And then remember that, um, the hallucination or whatever that he had in the cell that he said and it actually was what made him realize that he had a demon inside of him. I mean, that's what he said. But it, they came in the form of his grandparents, he, he said. And remember, he said their eyes were all red. So, it just it's just interesting. It really is. To think, you know, maybe there is something to this genetic memory. So, he says, so if you take all this into consideration, it does make for some interesting thoughts, you have to admit. I mean, I think. I guess what's interesting to me maybe might not be interesting to all of you, but hopefully some of you guys are still with me and are in, find it interesting. So, I mean, as you see, it looks like mental disorders definitely run on the Watt side. And, you know, a lot of mental disorders can be inherited directly by genes, right? And then you take this genetic memory into play, this possibility of this, any of this going on, and... It just adds to the puzzle. I think it just adds to his, where I guess I should say, it just makes it another piece of the puzzle. So as you can see, it looks like mental disorders definitely run on the Watt side. And then you have his mom, and you look at the possibility of how she may have raised him. So, you know, the whole nature versus nurture thing, or nature and nurture with it, you have the nature you know you the genes of the watt side the mental disorders it looks like that he could have inherited and then the nurture his mom the way his mom raised him could have had an impact on him too so i feel like it's just a recipe for disaster here you have the genes then you have possibly the way she raised him i know we don't know for sure how he was raised but we can only imagine by you know just different things we see like things we hear that she says or that she writes and just her actions and how you know I know we only have a couple interviews to go by but then we have you know those books that came that leaked out and we could just kind of and then not only that but like hearing the Rusex talk about some of their experiences and then just seeing from Shanann talking about you know from text we could kind of see how they were so I know there's two sides to every story but what I'm saying is it could, it, you know, that's why I'm saying it's not for sure. But the way she, like I said, could, may have raised him. Mixed with the genes he inherited through the Watt side. Looks like they have a history of some mental disorders and violence and trauma and they're on their side. And then with the, his mom, possibly... The way she raised him could have, you know, had an impact on him. So he had some, a lot of, a lot of nature and a lot of nurture that just all went into him and just made a big bunch of crazy, you know. And then on top of that, so you have the genes, you know, the Watt side, the mental disorders. You have the nurture part where, you know, his mom how she raised him may have impacted him. And then we're, we you bring in that genetic memory that I was just talking about. I know not everybody's probably going to believe in it, but people that do kind of find it interesting that think it could, there could be something to it. So you have, you could bring that in. And so all the experiences of all the trauma that 
whatever else, you know, behaviors, attitudes, um, experiences that may be passed down through this genetic memory and possibly have some effects on his thoughts and his memories. And it does make you wonder about Chris and what happened that morning and if any of this played a part in his mental disorder or what happened that morning. Let me know what you guys think. I hope, I don't know, but this one I was nervous about because you guys might just think I'm crazy. And thanks to Foxy Mama for finding all those death certificates of on the Watt side. And she also put together a pretty cool family tree of uh, Chris and Shanann's family tree. All right, so I'm going to put uh, screenshots of the death certificates that she sent me. And then she did like a uh, kind of like a graph of all of them together. So you could kind of see them all lined up. And um, yeah, so... I'm going to say bye now and I want to put them up and you guys could check them out and comment below. Let me know what you guys think, if you think I'm crazy or hopefully I I explained it in a somewhat understandable way. I was a little nervous because I know this could be kind of um, difficult to explain the genetic memory and stuff. Um, that's why I never wanted to be a teacher or a professor or whatever because I feel like I'm just not good at explaining things like I I understand them really well like I can understand things really good but like I, to be able to explain to other people I'm not good at explaining it like I have it in my head I can't take what's in my head and put it into words where they make as much sense as they do in my head I don't know. I guess this channel is helping me get a little, I feel like maybe improve on that. So I don't know. Let me know. Like I said, I was kind of nervous about doing this because I'm like, man, I don't want to screw this up because I know when I learned about it, I, I, it was just so interesting to me, but there's so many, there's so much stuff that I, you know, I, I just wanted to try to put it in like a sh shorter video, and a easy to, easy to explain and for you guys to understand and I didn't know how much to include, how much detail I should get into and which stuff I should include that you guys, you know, that would help you understand. So I don't know. I hope you guys did kind of follow it. And like I said, if you're still here, thank you guys. If you're still watching up until now. Wow. Good job. All right. You guys have a good night. Bye. Bye.